All right, you know what time uh, that means, Jim. It's time to move on. Yes. And, you know, I know um, we're going to talk about Dynamite. And you watched some of Raw. I don't even remember if I did, and I really don't care. Well, and that's the thing is, is I've, I've, I've got a couple of observations, but I think they're not wanting us to really care that much right now. They're saving it. Yeah. And the pay-per-view is about to happen. But I want to start with a couple of stories just because they're actually kind of happening on Twitter right now as we're recording. The first one revolves around the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter star ratings for AEW Full Gear. Oh, Christ, on a cracker already. I have not seen these yet, so let me open this up and we'll go through this. Because we just reviewed it, and, you know, if, again, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, every match at a certain point went at least 20 minutes. Yeah. Felt like it was longer, had long moments of just silence, and then everyone kicked out of everything. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Well, half of them are the uh, the badasses, and half of them are the video game characters or the kung fu movie specialists, and so you got the extremes of either one or the other. Anna J defeated Diana Perazzo seven minutes twenty two seconds, one and a quarter stars. Well, I I can't argue with that because I didn't watch it. Buddy Matthews won a four-way over Commander, Beast Mortos, a.k.a. Frank the Lawyer, <laughs> and Dante Martin, three and three-quarter stars. Oh, Jesus. So, uh, by the first uh, men's match, the four-way on the pre-show, we're up to almost Flair and Steamboat levels. But we're not there yet. Big Boom AJ defeated QT Marshall 11 minutes, 44 seconds. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second before you tell me anything. And we've talked about that we did watch this match, and we said, basically, besides the fact that it got over with the people, you know, better than almost anything on the, the, the rest of the event, that they had a basic match that they didn't fuck up in any way. And now we found out the poor guy... Old, old Boomer, AJ, the AJ Boom, uh, broke his foot in one of the early spots and still finished the fucking match. And he hadn't worked in 27 years or whatever the fuck it is. They had a basic match. They didn't really fuck up, and they did it for the fucking room and for the publicity. And if you rate it on a level of did it succeed in what it was supposed to be, it would be four stars. But if you're rating it as a wrestling match, what would you say, two or two and a half on anybody's reasonable scale? And that's what it got here. Dave Meltzer gave it two and a half stars. Okay, and then he did it probably because that's political, because he didn't want to put it over too much, but he couldn't fucking bury him, so he put it in the middle. You know, another thing that needs to be said, considering what we said before about the 20-minute matches that went on endlessly on this show... That match was 11 minutes and 44 seconds, and it was kind of perfect that it didn't go any longer. Yeah. If it had, it wouldn't have been, the pops wouldn't have been as big, the excitement would have gone down, it just would have fallen apart. A lot of these matches, I'm not saying everyone's Big Boom AJ and QT Marshall, but a lot of these matches would have done a lot better and been more effective, been effective at all, if they weren't 20 minutes. Well, and with uh, QT and AJ, the uh, everybody's initials are over these days. They probably went out there thinking bell to bell they were going to go 10 minutes, and it took them an extra minute and change whatever it was because people reacted real well, and they took a few minutes, or not a few minutes, but a little bit longer each time to fucking milk shit. And that's probably what they were aiming for to begin with, and that was exactly what they needed to do. The opening match on the main show, Private Party retaining the AEW tag titles over the Outrunners, the Kings of the Black Throne, and the Acclaimed, 13 minutes, 22 seconds, two and a quarter stars. Okay, and we didn't honestly have time to peruse that on this five and a half hour marathon, so I can't argue with him. MJF, and this is the final... Uh... Under 20 minute match, I think, until the Lashley match. MJF <laughs> defeated Roderick Strong 13 minutes, 40 seconds, three stars. Oh, good Lord. So 
the four-way with Random Jones and his, you know, hillbilly gang in the pre-show is three and three-quarter stars, but the star of the show, one of the only stars they got left, and they're about to shoot that golden goose in the foot. And Roddy, who's more over at this point now that Adam Cole, as we mentioned, and okay, well, three stars that that way they can't get too mad at me what but again it was only 13 imagine if it had gone 20 minutes and they had another seven minutes to kick out of stuff i think then it would have really elevated it instead uh. of the uh finish where the heel just won quickly if they had gone like even steven another five <laughs> minutes like crazy moves but kicking out i think it would have really helped them uh with the star ratings mercedes monet retained the tbs title over chris statlander 19 minutes, 24 seconds. According to Dave Meltzer, the longest AEW women's match in history. And it certainly seemed like it. Four and a half stars. Oh, come on. It was also Monet's best match in the promotion. And I can't disagree with that. I know. I was about now, if he'd have stopped there before the four and a half stars, I would have agreed with him 100%. But what the f- fuck is he on it uh, yeah you know, well, can you imagine how kurt angle feels oh god damn it you know well he's no mercedes monet well he certainly isn't jay white defeated adam page 19 minutes 53 seconds every single solitary bit of it four and a quarter stars <laughs> see this is where dave loses credibility what the fuck I mean, Do you get a star for every section of the fans that fall asleep? I, 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 again, this is where politics comes into play because he can't offend any of these people and they, they have come to expect this. Apparently, either that or he's just not... What? Again, if a match goes too long, you would think you would lose stars because you've gone too long. You would think you get to a point where you crescendo. If you keep going past that, you're only going to lose and they went a long time but let's go to the i next don't one. think dave ever gets to his crescendo that's the problem if he crescendoed more often he wouldn't have time to fucking do shit like this well i think that's the point of it it went from a four-star system to a five-star system to a six-star system to infinity it's now infinity <laughs> kyle fletcher defeated will osprey 24 minutes 14 seconds uh hold on me count this uh -oh. five and a quarter stars <laughs> When they're all together like that, the little stars, sometimes you can't tell what's five it, for six. Doesn't it take away from the match when uh, one guy picks the other guy up and leaps off the apron of the ring and Tombstone pile drives the motherfucker on the top of the steel ring stairs and then they get up and start doing another five or ten minutes worth of shit? That doesn't... That's not a demerit? No. Because... uh you know, that's not how it works. Uh, reality and realism don't really count when it comes to star ratings, but let's go to the next match. Daniel Garcia defeated Jack Perry to win the TNT title, 18 minutes, 15 seconds, three and three quarter stars. Well, that's almost a slap in the face at this point. Yeah, and that's pretty high considering the crowd was dead. And I mean, they came up for the finish of Garcia finally defeating Jack Perry, but... That was a bad match. Well, I think, it, like you you said about one of the matches, and it could apply in a number of cases, a lot of people popped it when the shit was over. Oh, thank God. Well, the, I think people were relieved that Jack Perry wouldn't be the champion. I think people there did want to see Garcia win, but also the heels won like almost every match on the show. This is one of the few examples where the heel didn't win. The next match, a surprise match, Kanosuke Takeshita, Retained the international title over Ricochet, 19 minutes, 14 seconds, four and a quarter stars. <laughs> but, you know, again, when you're getting up to the level of WrestleMania main events involving Michaels and The Undertaker and every top flair match ever, and as I said, the angle scale, what is it? Uh, I think they they repeat this every so often on the internet but osprey has had 37 five star matches or whatever and kurt angle never had any 
I can't remember whether this, I, I don't agree with four and a half stars or whatever, but I can't remember whether this was any good or not. What was wrong with this? The crowd was dead because they were tired by this point, and the match went way too long. And then eventually Takeshita won, but again, I like I, I think what the, 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 the finish was flat also where they, where they kept beating the baby faces. Whenever they'll beat them, they'll just beat them instead of fucking them or cheating them or in some way leaving it open. Well, there ought to be a rematch. Well, I'd never do that again in a million years. And then I just hear a boom, hit you with this. You're done. Bobby Lashley defeated Swerve Strickland, 13 minutes, 24 seconds, three and three quarter stars. Oh, good Lord. And again, now he's under four stars just because they didn't do cartwheels. Is, uh, well, it was kind of one-sided. Maybe it wasn't uh, even It should have been, as we talked about. That's the only thing they could do because Lashley just got there. They rushed the whole thing. But if you talk about a match that pretty much accomplished the purpose. That was one, if not the old, the other one being MJF, uh, that accomplished some kind of business purpose leading forward or getting a star over or just not doing goofy, embarrassing shit. And finally, the main event, the AEW... Speaking of goofy, embarrassing shit... The AEW world champion John Moxley defeated Orange Cassidy 19 minutes, 14 seconds, four-star match. <laughs> All right, with the other guys, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're so adept at the tumbling and the, the spinning kicks are so remarkable and they do dive after dive. And it's all, it's so spectacular. But here, Moxley's work is amongst the worst of any pushed wrestler ever. And look at the other fucking guy. Would Dave Meltzer not have laughed Orange Cassidy out of the building in 1993 or whatever if it was either company, WCW or WWE? And, and that's somehow a four-star. The work is not good. The fuck? How does he justify this? I don't know if he really can justify it. Well, I think somebody ought to get him on a goddamn phone and say, justify this, but not acknowledge me, but justify me. Well, the interesting thing is, you know, when Dave, you know, because he has a very interesting way of just condescending and fighting with people on Twitter as a business strategy. But he'll say, I am critical of AEW. You don't read the issues. And again, we've said this before, he comes to the point that all of us came to a long time ago, months after everyone, and then acts like he had a big discovery. But you can't say, I'm properly critical of AEW, when you just blow the matches that are part of the problem. That's part of the problem. All these kind of matches aren't doing anything to get anyone interested or in the door. You know, look at what WWE's doing. You don't really talk about the matches. When you get a great match, it stands out. But there's a satisfaction you get from watching the stories and the people that isn't there from AEW. And when you say, this match was four and a quarter, this match was four and a quarter, really? For throwaway matches in the middle of the pay-per-view where the fans go silent? This, there's a big disconnect between reality and people stuck in the wrestling bubble. And unfortunately, I think Dave is in a self-induced wrestling bubble. I think that's what he spends most of his time doing is blowing bubbles. Just all day long blowing bubbles. And sooner or later, bubbles are going to get tired of it. <laughs>